Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So as you can tell, I finally have my tower in and with that being said, I actually have two monitors set up so I might be looking forward, which is where currently it's the only one that's working because the monitor where I have my uh, camera at, for some reason, they just didn't ship a display port. So I had to order another one in and once that comes in, you know, finally oh, it'll just be a smooth movement. Um, I'm lucky to have gotten this one before all the prices for the GPUs and everything jumped up. I mean, it's already hard to come by a 3060 Ti, but I think for the most part, it should handle most of the video like needs. Um, for this particular video, we're going to go ahead and just stick with the original one for episode 10, only because it's a lot easier as a test run should anything happen to go ahead and like condense it and let you guys know, hey, you know what, if I fucked up, it's my fault, guys. I'll let you guys know, as opposed to doing the director's cut and all of a sudden just, I don't know, like not having the correct editing format or having to go through something like a whole new ordeal, which we will get to the director's cut version of the series as soon as possible. I'm letting you guys know that in advance. But with that being said, uh, why don't we just go ahead and just jump into it. Uh, well, before we jump into it, please practice some self-care. Let me know in the comments what you guys have done for self-care. I try and respond to as many comments as possible. If you guys are liking the reactions, let me know. It really helps a lot, and it's motivated me a lot, especially in the past couple of weeks. I've had a lot of, uh, I guess, tough moments with clients, with life, with everything. So it's been really motivating to go ahead and have you guys uh, comment. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. That's adorable, guys. That is so adorable. So, something that's been on my mind since the previous episodes, and, you know, you guys can probably see this since episode one, is I've always questioned the relationship between Puck and Emilio, right? And I guess it's more because I've been dealing with a lot of kids this past couple of months. But for some reason, I think it's just the way that, like, Puck interacts with Amelia or the way that, like, he's always watching her and securing, you know, just being nice. Uh, well, not genuinely nice, but, like, having that parental feeling. You, you guys, I'm probably sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, there's uh, certain levels where it's beyond just, like, I guess like a normal like co-worker relationship and it's more of like a family like a parent um, type thing and it's always like you know like if Puck was protecting her like a father or like a mother or something like that so I just wonder you know you guys have told me to watch Frozen Bonds which I will do as soon as I get the chronological you know people agree on a chronological set list as to what comes next so I will go ahead and watch Frozen Bonds after but like, yeah, it just feels as though he's very protective of her in that regard. And I wonder if that's limiting, you know. In one aspect, like, I don't know what the relationship is at all. But, like, if we were to put this in a therapeutic setting, like, I would ask, you know, how often is Puck a necessary component in your life, right? And if that being said, how often do you call upon him? Or how often do you need Puck's advice? Or why is Puck there, you know? As a psychologist, you know, if you're going into a counseling setting, and granted, you know, take my whole thing, like, as a, I guess, like, a life coach advice type thing, because otherwise it compl complications of licensure can arise or whatever. So let's just go through a counseling perspective, right? It's essentially, like, why do you need them? Why are they there? And, like, what does it mean to you, right? So when we ask these questions about, like, every character interaction, you start, like, getting a lot more of their motivations you start understanding why they're phrasing certain things certain ways and most importantly like at least for me like if i was looking into this it's why for example with like puck and amelia right why is there like it seems like puck understands amelia better than like 99 percent of people right granted i'm sure there's a backstory and whatever to it but why is it that like I don't know, whenever she's in danger, whenever a scenario pops up, like, he's the the only line of defense that she has, you know? 
I mean, that's it's a lot of a lot of things that surround it, but I'm just wondering all of this. I hope you guys can answer that without giving too much of a spoiler, or if you guys agree with me that this is like a very weird parental figure type uh, attachment. Let me know. Let me know. I can be wrong, guys, and I have been wrong a lot of times before. So, yeah, just hit me up. Let me know. guys something else just clicked to me right which is a whole and i had to stop it there before it goes away right uh because i'm not sure like sometimes especially with this show what i've noticed is like sometimes i have a question that's on my mind and like it'll pop up for like a millisecond right and then it doesn't get answered until like seven eight episodes later which then i'm like oh i should have asked that when i had the opportunity so i'm just gonna go ahead and ask it right does Emilia, right, because this whole concept of like, oh, well, you shouldn't feel like, you know, you owed your actions were equal to whatever she placed, right? And last time on like episode one or episode two, we talked about uh, the importance of promises and whether or not this society values promises or trust or bonds or whatever as much as we do in our reality, right? So the question that I'm getting to is essentially, I wonder if she has this weird... I wouldn't say weird, but just like a complex, like an not inferiority complex, but like, you know, she, it seems as though she has like, just by the way that she interacts with other people and the way that she carries herself or the way that she like interacts with Tuba, it's like, don't see me as under, don't see me as over, but like, I don't know, it's just like she has like this weird like social anxiety type thing where it's hard for people to make friends with her because of the stigma or the schema, which is essentially like the way that the world views her, or the way that she builds up her narrative that the world views her, right? So I wonder if she has purposely put up all these barriers and walls and whatnot of forming attachment based on her own schema of whatever may have happened in her past. Um, and I wonder, right, and just completely out there, I wonder if this is going to affect a relationship, because clearly Subaru is, you know, most people would say he's a clingy person he's a little but he's not like he's more of just like a you know if he attaches to you he's gonna attach to you and that's someone that has an anxious attachment that's what they're gonna go ahead and do it's quite normal but i wonder if this is what's gonna lead to like a huge separation and i've talked about this in other episodes right because you have two conflicting uh, attachment styles right off the bat and if someone has this negative schema of themselves right that they're a complete trash or whatever right that like oh, like, you know what, like, it's not a savior complex, because she helps Subaru because just, like, reciprocity. It's more of a, I don't know how to put it, just like a fear of getting too attached to individuals because they might hurt you. Uh, with some of my clients, or with some people that I've life coached, for example, we've talked a lot about the Goldilocks zone, right? And everyone and everyone does this, which is we tend to put people in an area that is enough for our anxiety to not act up so with certain people we give them just enough information for them to stay happy with other people we can build a thousand walls and like put them over to where neptune is if you're thinking about this like a solar system right the closer they are to the sun or to us the more anxiety it's going to build right so it seems as though she tends to keep people like for example, Subaru and whoever she cares about, and this Goldilocks zone, and everyone who doesn't else does, that doesn't really interact with her, it's like all the way up out to Pluto. And I wonder if whoever is close to her, to the sun, for example, if it's like a rumbling, like an earthquake type thing, where you know it's just out of control, like anxiety, like all this self doubt. She probably has like you know like negative schema talk, like Subaru does, right? Where he's often like, "I'm a, I'm an idiot." You know, I'm not going to solve this or whatever. I wonder if she has all this negative self-talk. And maybe this is why she's layered in this way. That's a very complex character. And I think this is like, if it is true, 
I might just be pulling at strings, honestly. But like just off of the little bit of information that Puck gave on that, for me, and like based off all, all, all the previous episodes, this is already something that's been like leading up to it. And if it is so, this is I applaud the show, honestly. Like that is very hard to pull off and very hard to do is to give characters this, this much depth. Anyway, sorry guys, let's go ahead and continue. So before we continue, right, I guess making that logical assumption, right, that like a dog biting you gives you more curses makes sense. The whole thing with Betty, right, for me, she's such an interesting character. Because so far, the only time that we've seen her leave her library was when Subaru asked her, right, uh, to protect them and when they got into a fight with Roswell and all that stuff, which, by the way, I'm sure you guys have listened to me say a thousand and one times, like, in all the other episodes, it's like, how creepy I find him, right? He is such a manipulative individual. Like, at least if it, like, he was in a counseling session, this is, like, something that I'd want to bring up as a form of, like, confrontation. It's like, why do you divulge information in certain ways? Why do you act in certain phrases and stuff? With Betty, this is the second time that we've seen her out, and if, just in a form of interaction, right, again, ask what, why, when, how, ask the general questions, right? What I'm curious is, aside from, like, I guess, like, you know, being asked to come out and, like, heal him or whatever the case may be, right, is that a significant amount of reason for her to be out there, right? Or, like, what ties her to this, like, realm to only stay in the mansion for example because clearly right the interaction that she had with like roswell again sorry i've been dealing with a lot of teams with a lot of kids and stuff the, the past number of weeks it reminds me a lot of like a stepfather stepdaughter type like situation like the, just the way that they discuss where they just like especially when they don't get along um sort of that argumentative state right and the fact that she's willing to even rise up type of thing or maybe someone you know just like living with someone that like i don't know it's just like there for you um but i just wonder what it's gonna take because she's slowly opening up to subaru right and i wonder if the key for her as an individual because she has walls up everywhere right um and literally like if, you're, if we're going to talk about walls let's talk about her changing doors like every so often and not letting people in right and Subaru is, like, the one person that can go into her, like, doors or whatever and not have to, like, go crazy trying to find her or whatever. So, again, you know, I wonder if that's just symbolism to him being able to actually, like, get into her Goldilocks zone, her zone of, you know, may maybe it'll cause a little bit of anxiety for her or whatever, but clearly she's there because she cares, right? And clearly she's giving out this information and she's even, like, shocked by it when he doesn't react a certain way. So, I just wonder what her backstory is. I hope that we get a nice little bow on it and it all comes out uh, nice. also you know sorry i know i'm pausing a lot but it's also just because breaking it down right i wonder who she considers a friend right because she has these walls up and the way that like 
she's interacting with Subaru is rather uh, different than she, like, than I assumed that she would uh, react, right? I assumed that, like, she would just cut him down, be like, nope, get out, I don't want anything to do with you, but, like, she's slowly but surely opening up. Uh, and I think that just might be because of his character and the way that he's designed to uh, really, it's like, dive into people's insecurities or you know, he's doing a lot of what a psychologist would do, but in like a humanistic way where, you know, he will occasionally fuck up significantly. And then like in the process also learn that like he has a lot of issues and it's, it's weird to think about, right? Cause in a way he fixes or helps them like process a lot of their trauma and their issues. And then after that, he's able to process his own. It's a weird, like, multi, like, circle scenario there. But anyway, I was just wondering about her friendships, if she has any or anything like that. And also, it was kind of, yeah, like... That's actually very, it's very assuring to go ahead and hear him say that, right? Especially the whole, like, you know, life is too precious to be giving up on, considering that he tends to fall in a circle where he does, right? I just wonder uh, how long this is going to last, right? And it's not in a negative, deconstructive way. It's in a way that, like, it is perfectly normal. And I will repeat this again for anyone out there. It is perfectly normal for a person to relapse even in therapy. And I'm not just talking about substance abuse. I'm talking about, like, when one is healing or building their own, like, schemas or rebuilding some new, like, uh, self-assurance, like, uh, big statements. Like, for example, if I... I was like, you know, I am lonely. Let's say that that is my cognitive belief. And if we're changing that until like, you know, I have friends or, you know, I am not as lonely as I have friends. And that is my new cognitive belief. Sometimes it's like you will fall from like having this new set belief until I am lonely again. And it's like, it's the process of working that up and it's perfectly okay. It's perfectly logical for people to go through that. Right. It's not just a one and done and you're fixed. It's a ever working process of like making yourself better. So, considering that this is, there's still a lot of episodes left, I'm assuming that there's still a lot more tragedy to come, which kind of hurts my soul because he's a, you know, he's a very likable dude. He's very empathetic uh, to others as well. And it, like, seeing someone suffer in a way, like, if you're a very empathetic person as well, like, it hurts you to watch others suffer, even if they're not, like, you know, if you watch a movie or whatever, or music even, it's sometimes you get hit with those waves that you get goosebumps or you're really invested in the characters or, you know, sometimes a friend opens up to you and, like, you're there for them. Like, you know, you can never truly understand what they're going through, but you can draw from your own life experiences to put yourself in their shoes, right? And that's empathizing with someone. So, yeah, it's just, it's, it's hard seeing him go up and down, but that's sort of part of the process of, you know, getting better and going through life. Before this goes crazy, right? Where is Roswell? I know that, like, he said he had a meeting and everything, but, you know, when he said that, I got super suspicious and everything. So I wonder if her clairvoyance, and, like, I'll tie this in. Trust me, I'll, I'll, tr I'll try to tie this into, like, a crackpot theory that I have. So I wonder if her clairvoyance is, like, you know, seeing through an animal's, like, perspective, bugs, life, nature, whatever that may be, right? Because um, if... She, say that she's using it but through only like you know she can see through their eyes but it's still like being processed through her own like 
I guess, eyes, for example. Like, you can look through an animal's eyes, but you still have to process it through your brain, right? Um, I'm sure that there was a couple of studies out there where, like, our brain processes, like, uh, certain images at a certain speed, right? And so, if Roswell is this powerful individual, right, and as I said, I don't trust him, never have, never will, it's just his character design, the way that he's opened up, the way that he carries her to a certain tone, and it's just more suspiciously, the way that he left the mansion when things started to clear up, like, all of this adding on to one another is just super duper creepy right so i wonder right if because there's a certain frequency where like for example an object can vibrate in and yet we're not able to experience and or see it so i wonder if he's somewhere nearby just watching all of this go down right because i'm pretty sure he's smart enough to recognize that one ram could probably use this technique and two that like most people with their naked eyes would probably not be able to see him. And if he's this powerful wizard, I wonder if he's able to, you know, do a technique like that or something like that. I don't know. It's either me or just jumping to conclusions just because he has the clown makeup and I don't know. He's just creepy overall. as always wow so yeah this episode was a lot more like into the fight scenes and everything that was happening which is great like i actually really really enjoy it uh i used to do a lot of martial arts so just seeing the fluidity of some of the movements and you know some of the design even if it does have magical elements into it is wonderful so something that was crossing my mind when all of this was going on is you know with the skills that he has now and if he can like read and write how would Subaru survive in this world, right? If he wasn't being, um, you know, servant or whatever, like, what would he do, right? Would you think that he would try and like bring knowledge from another world, like his world, into this one, or like do you just think that he would have to rely on someone else to do everything for him? I don't know. I think he might, like. I think he might pose around in something genius, especially if he still had the wrong in it for he brought with him, and sell it patent it i don't know do something weird with it like there's a lot of different possibilities and it's crazy to think about like a what if scenario like that like what if he just had to get a regular job or like he had to try and like survive on his own like what would he do it's interesting and i, I always go through these scenarios with you know with people that i'm talking with or people that i'm giving counseling advice or whatever right because it's, it's always interesting to go ahead and like see that perspective and see that like hey you know what especially if you see yourself in a negative light there is positivity as you can list your strengths in that manner right so with that being said you know something else that crossed my mind which is how powerful can individuals be in this world and i think that's something that was completely unaddressed in like you get a i guess a version of the power when uh reinhardt hard heart or whatever uh kills uh stabby mcstab stab the bowel hunter right uh or not kills but whatever happened there right you just see like that flash of light and you see how extremely powerful that is right i wonder if satella is like powerful enough to like if she's powerful enough to bring someone from another world 
like, where does her limit of measures stop, right? And then, I guess my follow-up thing is, is there such a thing as transfer of consciousness in this world, right? Because, I guess if if you realize that you were the first one brought in from another world or another dimension, right? Or well, what is the meaning behind it, right? Are there others that can relate to that? Why, like, finding the significance of that, right? Even if there's no purpose at all behind it, it's just trying to find out, like, one, how many others have there been? Two, if, if I'm the first, why? And three, with the whole, like, transfer of consciousness, it's like, you know, can someone powerful enough transfer consciousness from one body to another and not have repercussions from it, you know? So essentially, like, I'm just wondering if, like, you know, if he had ever had the ability to, to do something like that, would he be able to be like, okay, you know what, I am still going to be Subaru, but I'm going to be in, like, Roswell's body, for example, right? Or something like that. So I wonder how potent, or even if that's a possibility in this world because of everything that we've seen. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It is what it is. I, you know, just my mind just goes into like a thousand and one directions. And that's just one thing that like, it, it, it was bugging me. Uh, but anyway, uh, with that being said, yeah, no, that just brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys like that. I hope you guys like the, like, you know, the fact that we're actually able to go ahead and like, get stuff done a little bit quicker. Um, as I get my new display ports and everything, it should be a lot simpler of the process. And yeah, no, I hope you guys practice some real self-care guys. Do something at least like an hour a day, or even if it's like do something throughout the week that's for you yourself. I know sometimes we get caught up in work and life is crazy and all of this, but you need time for yourself. Compassion fatigue is a thing and burnout is a thing. So please do something that you enjoy, something that you love. Um, and let me know down, down in the comments, whatever you guys do for self-care and for self-love. And if you guys have any questions about anything psychology related, like topics, uh, general questions that you wanted, always wanted to ask like a life coach or a psychologist or whatever, leave it in the comments as well. I'll go ahead and answer those. Um, I will try and make, keep this up to like, you know, twice a week, at least for this week, this will be like the one test video to see how it does. If you guys watch this, give it a like button. You know, it really helps and share it around. You know, I've seen that like we've definitely have grown. We grew from like, I guess the past two videos from like 30 subscribers to 180 something now or 150 something. I don't, I'm not even quite sure it just goes up. So thank you guys so much. I really care about you guys. And I try and answer as much people as I can. Love you guys. Have a great day. I hope you guys enjoyed it.